guys. Welcome to session three. Okay, so remember in session two, we learned that God made us with very special, very specific personality trait makeup. Mm -hmm. And even though it's different than any other person on the planet, it is good. Your personality that God made is fantastic because God does not make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Personality traits are only bad when they are misused or abused. That's true. And we also learned that because we are different, our spouse will not think, feel, act, or react exactly like us in every circumstance. That's 100% right, babe, because we're totally different, and God made us that way. Mm -hmm. And we learned that God gave us 12 of the same personality traits when he gave us the same Holy Spirit. Two people, two personalities, with one spirit between them, two becoming one. That's right. Okay, so today we are going to discuss our past, present, and future. Yeah, so right off the bat, looking at your worksheet, let's all write down three major things about your past that you bring into your marriage. Use the back of your worksheet if you want. Um, we want you to write those down, and then when you're done writing, we also want you to discuss them. So write them down, discuss, and then rejoin us as soon as you're done. Go ahead and push pause now. Okay, are you back? So did you discuss those three things? Some things that I could talk about that I brought into yeah. my marriage a long time ago. Tell us, what'd you bring? Well, first of all, I bought, I brought the background of having like a broken home. Um, my mom was married several times. Um, I didn't meet my real dad until I was 10. Uh, I know that I had lots of siblings as a result of lots of different marriages. So that was one thing I brought in. Another thing I brought in was uh, my kind of my overachievement in mm. school. <laughs> um, so I was kind of successful with school academics and sports and had a lot of friends in school. And that actually led to the third thing, which was I had a boyfriend for a long time in high school. And so we were involved um, with some sexual sin and I brought that into our marriage. And so you brought in perfectionism, excellence, and intelligence. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, I came from a very stable, very long married parents, childhood and family. Grew up in a conservative Baptist church. Um, also pursued academic and athletic mm -hmm. excellence. Um, I had, I was engaged before, mm -hmm. so I brought in a previous engagement. I did have some sexual sin that, uh, sin baggage that I brought into our marriage. Mm -hmm. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to jump into the worksheet where we have the Bible verses, and I'm going to go ahead and read those now. Mark 11:25 tells us, forgive. Only then will your heavenly father be inclined to also wipe your slate clean of mm. sins. Love do you that. think, do you think <laughs> forgive means forgive past? Absolutely. Past and present. <laughs> yeah. Well, am I glad because I've got a lot of ugly sin in my past. That mm, <laughs> I'm glad God, God <laughs> forgives that. Yeah. Ephesians 4.32 says, forgive one another as quickly and thoroughly as God in Christ forgave you. Mm. Quickly and thoroughly. I like that. Quickly mm -hmm. and thoroughly. Psalm 103 tells us, he forgives your sins, every one. He doesn't treat us as our sins deserve. Okay, so he doesn't treat us as our sins deserve. This is where that agape, unconditional love that God has for mm -hmm. us comes into play. If God would have divorced me every time I cheated on him, mm -hmm. I'd be divorced a million times. Yeah, me too. <laughs> All right, Isaiah 43, 18. Forget about what's happened. Don't keep going over old history. Be alert. Be present. I'm about to do something brand new. Mm -hmm. Awesome. 2 Corinthians 5.17, now we look inside and what we see is that anyone united with the Messiah gets a fresh start, mm -hmm. is created new. The old life is gone, a new life emerges. And then in Philippians 3, I'm off and running and I'm not looking back. So let's keep focused on that goal. Those of us who want everything God has for us. So what I'm hearing God say is we have to forgive each other's faults. For sure. Jesus sees none. I mean, we're forgiven. Yeah. So we need to forgive. Yep. Yeah. God as, says he as quickly and thoroughly as, as quickly he and does. thoroughly, <laughs> yeah. And God tells us in the Bible that he actually throws our 
sins in the sea of forgetfulness. Mm -hmm. He removes our sins as far as the east is from the west. I love that. We were once uh, covered in red, and now we're white as snow, he tells us. That's right, babe. He sees all blank pages in our sin record book. Wow. Hmm. I like that. Blank pages. Let me look and see a record of your sins. You know what? I can't find any. <laughs> that is awesome. Okay, next on your worksheet, write down five things that are important to you now. Mm -hmm. So we're moving away from the past. Oh. The past, all our baggage, anything negative you bring into, it's forgiven by Jesus. It has to be forgiven by your spouse. I mean, we literally read, God says we are a new creation. Yep. You have a new union, a new relationship, a new fresh start. We're not looking back. We're only looking forward. Okay. Bringing us to the present. Mm -hmm. Write down five things that are important to you, just you, not together, mm -hmm. to you personally right now. Five things that come to mind and write those down in your worksheet. Okay. Each of you individually and then discuss them. Discuss your five things with each other and then rejoin us as soon as you're done discussing those. Okay. So go ahead and push pause now. You back? Okay, did you discuss each of your five things? Okay, so I'll tell you what I wrote down. Uh, my five things I said was definitely my relationship with Jesus is important to me. Um, I lump together my marriage and kids because our family is super important to me um, in spending time with each. Um, I also said family and friends, so mm -hmm. Uh, outside family extended extended family. family yep and then friends making sure i spend some time with them mm -hmm. um i also said the ministries that i'm involved in those are important to me right Good. now and then i said my job my job is important awesome mm -hmm. your monday motivation bible study <laughs> with your colleagues yeah i love it <laughs> yeah that's awesome okay so i wrote down my what's important to me right now my personal relationship with christ mm -hmm. um you and our marriage our kids mm -hmm and my um, friends, yeah. and then my ministries. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, those are great. Okay, so Philippians 2, 3 through 5 tells us, don't be selfish. Think of one another as more important mm. than yourself. Don't be concerned for your own interests, but be concerned with the interests of others. Have this attitude that was in Christ Jesus. Love each other, agape love. <laughs> And be deep-spirited friends. Don't push your way to the front. Mm. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead. Forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. Jesus lived a selfless, obedient life and then died a selfless, obedient death. Be like him. Okay, so what I'm hearing is he wants us to consider the other as more important than ourself. That's right. And we are serving the other and we need to be interested in what the other is interested in. Mm -hmm. And that's selflessness. Yeah. And that is servanthood. Okay, so what is important to your spouse now needs to be most important to you now. Mm. So your five things trump all my five things. It is my job to be concerned and interested to, in making the, your most important things first priority. It is my job to make your dreams come true. And it's my job to make your dreams come true. And when we're both doing that, all of our dreams get to come true. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. That's where marriage being 100 zero comes into play mm -hmm. and it turns into 100 100. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, remember last week in scripture that we learned we need to be content with second place. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Yep. Marriage is the only place in the world where you try your hardest to get second place. It's our job to make our spouse's dreams come true, not our own. Yeah, because the best marriages are two servants in love. Yep. Okay, so now we know what's most important to our spouse now at the present, okay? We clearly know what is most important to them. So now we're going to write down like one, two, or three things that are stressing oh, you now stressing. in the present, okay. currently, okay? So go ahead and write down one, two, or three things that are stressing you out or that are stressful or that you worry about right now, and then disclose those with mm -hmm. your spouse and discuss them, mm -hmm. and then rejoin us as soon as you're done discussing. You can go ahead and push pause now. All right, you back. Okay, so the things that I wrote down that are stressing me out right now, 
Um, I said, number one, my workload. <laughs> I feel like I spend a lot of time at work getting it done so I don't bring it home, but it's kind of a lot, especially at this time of year. You are an achiever and a perfectionist <laughs> and a taskmaster. I am. <laughs> And then um, health of others stresses me mm -hmm. out a little bit because there's some loved ones that are going through some things right now and my heart breaks for them. Um, and then sometimes money can be a stressor <laughs> from month to month, making sure the income is coming in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, the thing that's stressing me the most right now, I only wrote one thing and that's, oh. fi that's finances. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, totally unstable present financially, unstable future, mm -hmm. unstable retirement. Um, God isn't, God is completely stable and he's never let us down and he's always provided. I don't know why that worries me and stresses me. Um, that's part of my sinful nature, I guess, <laughs> but that is what stresses me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and your health. Your oh, you wrote down two things. Well, <laughs> I didn't write that down, but it does stress me. Yeah. <laughs> your aplastic anemia diagnosis. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I get that. Okay, well, should we jump into the scriptures again? Yeah, First Peter, please. First Peter 5, 7 says, Cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Mm -hmm. And then Philippians 4, 7 tells us, Don't worry. Instead, pray. Let your petitions and phrases turn your worries into prayers. Before you know it, a sense of God's peace will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah, God wants to take care of our stressors, our problems and things that we're afraid of and our worries mm -hmm. because he cares. Awesome. In fact, he gave us a spouse to help us with those things that stress us and worry us. See, God helps us and solves our problems with our stressors. Oftentimes he does it through our spouse. Yeah, and as a spouse, it's our job, well, actually, it's our privilege mm -hmm. to help our spouse with the things that stress them out. 100%, God helps us, and he often uses people to actually do the helping. <laughs> it's very important to know what is important to your spouse mm -hmm. and what is stressing your spouse so you can help and serve them and encourage them and make their dreams come true. This, <laughs> this is our job in the present. Awesome. Okay, so back on our worksheet, we discussed our past and our present. Now we're moving on to our future. Ooh, future, awesome. So you're gonna write down what you want to do in five years and 10 years, if it's anything different than mm -hmm. five years, um, and share and discuss that with each other. And so we want you to take the time to write it down individually and then share and discuss. So go ahead and push pause now and join us when you're back. Okay, you back? All right. Um, this is what I wrote down that I want in five years. I want you to be healthy. I want you to, uh, in five years from now, you will be seven or eight years into your aplastic anemia diagnosis. Hmm. And uh, medical journals give it a three to five year lifespan with that. They don't know what they're talking well, about. Well, <laughs> most people that have aplastic anemia are 95 years old and diabetic and on chemotherapy and that's how they get a plastic anemia not a healthy otherwise healthy 48 year old that gets it out of nowhere so there is a chance you can live another 40 years God's got this. with it but that's what i want in five years that's what i want in 10 years you to outlive your diagnosis you're already you're already on path for that and five to ten years uh what worries me is also our finances i would love to have some stability in our finances. Okay. And even if it's not stable, I want to be stable in my faith that God will take care of me even, even if it's unstable. Okay. Well, and I wrote down in five to 10 years, I'd actually like to be retired from my job so that I can Ooh. like work for pleasure versus having to work. Um, and then a healthy marriage. I didn't really think of my own health because I don't think of myself as sick. So <laughs> um, a healthy and strong marriage, thriving and going strong. And then I also said, if it's God's will for some grandbabies. <laughs> nice. So in the intro video, you graded our marriage in eight. I have a mm -hmm. question. Is our marriage unhealthy now? Do you want, it, you want it healthy in five years or just healthier? I just want it healthier. Or healthy as it is now. 
as healthy or even a little healthier, but I think we have a pretty strong marriage now. <laughs> well, I do too. I graded it a nine, you graded it an eight. Mm -hmm. By the end of this course, we both, our goal is to grade it at a 9.5. So <laughs> your five year wish might come true in seven weeks. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Psalm 37 4 on your worksheet says, mm -hmm. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Second Chronicles 16 9. I don't know if you've ever heard of this verse. I think I quoted it in our introductory starting video. It says, For the eyes of the Lord search to and fro throughout the earth, that he may strongly support those whose hearts are completely his. And then Jesus in Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things will be added unto you. Mm, those are such great verses. God promises to give us our heart's desires, mm -hmm. dreams, needs, and even our wants. We first need to delight ourselves in him. 100%. The best thing you can do for yourself is to not do something for yourself. Mm -hmm. In fact, ready for my Old Let's Testament Bible it. verse, <laughs> Jeremiah 45, 5. God says, are you seeking great things for yourself? <laughs> do not seek them. Mm -hmm. Period. How about mm -hmm. that? That's weird. But you think about it. If you're serving yourself, um, you're not serving God or others, right? It's true. Yeah. Serve God by serving others. So on your worksheets, write down five things that you think would give the Lord delight. Yeah. So think of five things that would make him smile because you're putting him first, mm -hmm. doing his will. Mm -hmm. So write them down, share and discuss those with each other, and then come back when you're done. So go ahead and push pause now. Okay, I'll go ahead and share mine. Okay. Um, I put, be 100% faithful to what he's given me. Okay. And that means um, give. Mm -hmm. Give money away, give things away, give possessions to those in need. Love it. Who need more than me. And that sounds contradictory to saving for retirement and stable, but mm -hmm. there are people that need money more than me. Right. And if God brings them into my circle... I enjoy helping others. Mm -hmm. I just do. Um, also, my spiritual gifts, I want to be able to encourage others. Mm -hmm. um, I want to be able to enrich people's relation, marriage relationships. Yeah. And I also want to tell people about Jesus. You're so good at that and bringing up in everyday conversation. <laughs> um, I, I can't help it. It's, it's a joy to me. Yeah, that's awesome. So things that I wrote down yeah. to delight myself in the Lord mm -hmm. would be my daily time in the Bible. Um, I love studying God's Word because there's mm -hmm. full of so many great promises and just rich scriptures. Um, also daily time in prayer, especially our prayer time together is important. Mm -hmm. um, I also wrote down the ministries that I'm involved in, um, continuing to find ways that I can serve the Lord. And also I wrote down helping others. Um, so just kind of like you did when you see somebody that has a need, I love being able to help that person in need, whether it's spending time with them mm -hmm. or money sometimes, and then talking to others about Jesus. Awesome. Well, you wrote a lot. Well, you said I five only said things. Three. I only said three. You wrote like 10. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Man, you're delighting yourself more. You're, you're a better Christian. No, I think I just <laughs> am more long winded. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So it's important to know that. Any way you serve God, any way that you serve others is actually a ministry. Mm -hmm. So you can minister in a million different ways. For yeah, sure. you don't have to be a pastor of a church or a missionary in a foreign country to be a minister. You can minister in a million different ways. And here's the way um, I like to describe where and how you minister. It's however you want, yeah. however on your heart is. Because usually when you're in God's will, doing the things he wants you to do, he impresses on your heart things that are fun, things that you enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. Some people really enjoy going into prisons and talking to the guys about Jesus. That's true. You know, and they come out super happy. They love it. Do whatever you love. It doesn't have to be that. Mm -hmm. It can be going to your aunt's house every Tuesday night and just having dinner with her because she's lonely. Yeah. It can be, yeah. My whatever guess you is, enjoy. Yeah, my guess that's your is ministry. you are do it. ministering even right now within your family or your yeah. work. Yeah. <laughs> So let's do those things, those <laughs> things that you wrote down. 
um, let's do them. Yeah. Ways that you can delight yourself in the Lord and show him that your heart is completely his and he promises to completely support you. Yep, good yep. plan. He's looking. <laughs> okay, good job, guys. Let me pray for us and then we'll talk about what's next. Lord, we thank you so much for forgiving our past, mm -hmm. helping us with our present, and promising to give us a wonderful future if we delight ourselves in you and fully commit our hearts to you. Help us to do that, Lord. Help us to do those things that we wrote down. Help us to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. And we thank you for taking care of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, guys, we'll see you in session four for meeting each other's needs. Oh, that might be the most important lesson of them all. 100%. <laughs> Bye, guys.